Without further ado, let us go to our good friend in Pyeongchang this morning. Uh, it is 8.49, just before 9 o'clock in the evening. And uh, Arash Badadi is standing by with the crowds milling about behind you. Where are you, Arash? <laughs> We are just outside the hockey arena, Kevin. We're getting set. Canada, Germany, men's semifinal. There's actually a number of Canadian fans around here, and they may be a little nervous. Ben Scrivens is not dressed yeah. for tonight's game. He's up for that upper body injury in the quarters against the Finns. So Kevin Poulin will start against the Germans tonight. And, of course, I, I don't know if this country can take another major loss of one of, one of its teams. Uh, the, it was, we're still stinging from that ladies' loss the other night. Yeah, and, and so are they, to be quite frank with you. I, I, didn't, I don't think any of them saw it coming. Matter of fact, it was Megan Augusto who told me, I am 100% in shock. I mean, Canada had won every gold medal game against the U.S. since 2002. They had beaten the Americans in the round-robin game. Shannon Zabados, their goaltender, was lights out. They led 2-1 in that hockey game. Everything had gone in their favor, and afterwards, they didn't know what to say nor do. Now, Jocelyn LaRock, Kevin, you may have remembered yeah. in the in the medal line, along the blue line, she took the silver medal off. She actually apologized for that earlier today. So it's a Canadian team that's licking its wounds. Maybe soon they'll appreciate the fact that they won a silver medal, but not yet. What's going on behind you, Arash? What, what's going on with all that cheering? I, I lost you there for a sec, Kevin. Do you still have me now? I got you now. Okay, good. I was just wondering what all that cheering was going on behind you. Well, we actually have the... It's funny you mentioned the women's hockey game. The enemy is behind us, Kevin. We got the, the Today ladies? Show from NBC, and they have the American women's hockey team up there on stage. Don't so I don't know if Amanda Kessel and the rest, Hillary Knight and the rest of them, we want to show them on, on Canadian television. They've done enough. They've done enough bad things to our country for a little while. Who wants Arash to, to, to photobomb NBC? Who wants Arash to, to photobomb NBC? There's a golf cart behind you. I suggest you get in the golf cart and you go driving through there. No, I think that golf cart is actually going to the merchandise store. Oh, okay. Or it may be going to McDonald's because they got a whole bunch of Big Macs on the back of it. So. <laughs> okay, so um, what, is, what are we going to say is the highlight so far? I mean, we, we haven't, we're not finished. Just a couple of days left. The highlight so far, is, is it going to be Tessa and Scott? To me, it isn't. To be quite honest with yeah. you, I think one of the great stories of these Olympics is an athlete who was quite anonymous coming in and may be a household name by the time the closing ceremony ends. Kim Boutin is only 23 yes. years old. She's a short track speed skater. She's won three medals at these games. She became the first Canadian woman to win a 1,500 meter short track medal and no short track athlete has won three, no short track a woman athlete. But beyond just that, it was after she won the first one. She'd finished fourth in the 500, then a South Korean athlete was penalized, so Bhutan's up with a bronze. Her social media was littered with death threats. And Bhutan actually had to lock down her Instagram and her Twitter, and she went quiet for a couple of days. And she ran into that South Korean athlete in the cafeteria a couple of days later. And she went and gave her a hug, and, at, and Kim asked her, are you okay? Are you doing fine? And they had that moment. They said, listen, we can't allow any of this to affect who we are, what we do, and what these Olympics are all about. Let's be above this. And wow. then Bhutan went out and won two more medals. <laughs> so when you think about what the Olympics are about, what they're supposed to be with unity and harmony and competition, Kim Bhutan embodied a lot of that. And Kevin, she said she watched the closing ceremony of Rio 2016, and she watched Penny Alexiak, also an anonymous yeah. athlete before those games started. She watched Penny carry the flag, and Kim said, wow, isn't that amazing what she's accomplished? Well, she well, carried... Less than two short years later, here's Bhutan, who may very well be Canada's flag bearer that's, on Sunday. That's what I was just saying. Comes to an end. There's a good chance she'll carry that flag. All right, thank yeah. you very much. Arash Badani talking to us from Pyeongchang. Go in there, get into the arena, and cheer loud for Team Canada. That game gets underway soon.